Hey guys, this is Max and today I want to talk about Photokina 2016 and three trends that I could make out at the fair and that struck me personally the most. In addition to that, I wanted to share some personal highlights uh, that I really enjoyed. Overall, if I'm really honest, I'm a little bit disappointed about Photokina 2016 and on a scale from 1 to 10, I would probably just give it a 5. And part of the reason for that is that the photo industry didn't struck me as very innovative this year. Um, in many ways, the industry only catered to the audience's demand or some kind of demand that they expected to be there. And only in a very few cases, and I will talk about that in a second, I have the feeling that the industry is actually pushing the boundaries of innovation and trying to come up with some, something new. Um, and looking, actively looking for an audience for that. So basically I want to talk about three trends. The first one would be instant film, um, and that's of course closely related to analog photography. Then something completely different, and that is uh, all the 360 degree and virtual reality cameras. So reaction cameras, mostly made for capturing moments. And the third trend that I made out is mirrorless medium format cameras um, that I also want to talk about. So let's start and focus on instant film first. When we think about instant film, what we saw in the last couple of years, it was the impossible project reviving Polaroid film, creating instant film again, uh, doing black and white films and certain specialty films, refurbishing old Polaroid cameras and really creating a market for instant film enthusiasts to get into, to buy a camera, to get film and uh, to start shooting instant film again. And most recently, of course, The Impossible Project released the very first own camera, the i1, with at least some success is my impression. Uh, of course, directed at my generation, young people using smartphones. Um, the camera features a connection to a smartphone app. It features a ring flash. It's, it, it really feels in many ways like uh, not only directed to uh, occasional shooters or complete amateurs, but more towards people who are a little bit more serious about their analog instant film photography. And Photokina in many ways showed the reaction of the established companies like Fujifilm um, and most importantly, or most interestingly, Leica, uh, a company that didn't do anything uh, connected to instant film so far. So what Fujifilm announced was first and foremost that there will be a black and white Instax mini film uh, very soon. There will also be coming early or next year, spring 2017, it says an Instax Square. So a square a Polaroid or instant film format. Again, both, both these things, in my opinion, are inspired by the success of the Impossible Projects. Uh, <laughs> sometimes a square of formats that they offer and also the black and white films that they offer. Uh, and not just as Fujifilm, the color film. Um, and in addition to that, Fujifilm also uh, said uh, or introduced new uh, camera systems, um, sometimes in collaboration with companies like Michael Kors. So you have a golden Instax camera that is probably directed at, for example, fashion bloggers and people like that, who might just find it fashionable to have a golden camera like that. Uh, and in many ways, I think Fujifilm is trying to make it more of a lifestyle product and get into that market. Maybe disregarding the fact that uh, the real film or analog instant film shooters that the Impossible Project drew as a crowd and as a and received some following from, um, is not really looking for a Michael Kors golden camera. At least that's my impression. In a very similar fashion, we have Leica introducing the Leica Zofort, uh, their instant film camera that is very similar to the Instax Mini, also uses the very same film that the Instax Mini cameras use. So um, I would assume or suspect that there was quite some collaboration in the background and that maybe Leica even had a word in uh, Fuji introducing this new black and white film. Leica will also uh, offer both the color film of Fujifilm and the black and white version as a rebranded uh, version of the films. 
I hope they won't be more expensive just because it has a Leica brand on it, <laughs> but it's quite likely to be honest that this might be the case. And the product manager for Leica even said during an interview that I saw on YouTube that of course this is a camera that does not cater to the professional typical Leica consumers um, but or customers Leica customers but to amateurs who want to occasionally shoot with a fashionable instant film camera and of course also uh, talking about our time where it's all about vintage and retro but at the same time we have this area of instant gratification so nobody kind of wanna, wants to wait for actually developing their film and receiving it back and scanning it and, and so forth um so this might explain to some ex to some extent this uh resurgent or uh, resurgence of instant film but in many ways it feels at least to me that the established companies are trying to get some of the success that the impossible project was able to create uh, basically on its own and out of the blue uh, and i find that very interesting uh, this development a second trend that I noted uh, and that probably a lot of other uh, visitors to Photokino 2016 noticed is uh, that they are, that almost any company tries to come up with a 360 degree slash virtual reality camera. So how to create this kind of interesting 360 degree video footage that is reliable. So action cameras that you can just use like that, that are easy to use, that kind of make sense. Uh, this is the niche and companies like Nikon, for example, put quite some effort uh, at their booth into the so-called Nikon Key Mission 170, which is a 170 degree version of the camera and the Key Mission 360, which is the main uh, camera for 360 degree shooting um, styled in a very similar fashion to a, a typical action camera like a GoPro Hero camera um, but to me it all did not feel mature this is not mature technology you don't really know um, what it's capable of yet it it, it doesn't feel like the most important issues are solved. Some of the companies let you send your footage to them in order for them to stitch it together and send it back to you, for example. That's what I heard at one of the stands. Then uh, you have, of course, this major problem of um, being close to the cameras in some cases to be able to con connect to it with your smartphone and kind of uh, control it or you... <laughs> Um, have to actually hold it and be close to it which of course means that you're always in the frame <laughs> um, and there's no solution at least from what I know uh, to just remove yourself from this from this uh, scene in, in a very simple uh, fashion and all that kind of stuff makes it makes it feel like okay this is not a mature technology and especially compared to existing action cameras like the GoPro Hero 5 that was just released with its 4k video uh, capabilities uh, this really feels like okay it's on the pinnacle at the pinnacle of its technological development it feels like a solid and good um, camera and all the the other stuff that's out there uh, the Kodak 360 experience 360 degree experience was another example on um, the Nikon cameras that I just mentioned and there's one more by a smaller company uh, a startup I think called Vivo or Vivo that added the 3D aspect to it. So you have two cameras uh, directed at each direction uh, with a distance of six centimeters, which is the equivalent of the typical eye distance of a human being. So in order to be able to produce 3D footage uh, in a 360 degree fashion, they showed us the footage using an LG smartphone and one of the virtual reality applications for it. And of course that was not really convincing primarily because of the performance of the smartphone and uh, what you get there uh, in terms of uh, quality and, uh, and the graphics performance and things like that so again it, this does not feel mature it's more like okay something to play around with for amateurs or for people really into uh, pushing the boundaries of creativity and trying out something new and i had a I had a lengthy conversation with one of my friends uh, at, at the fair and he said something interesting. He said for him this is primarily about capturing like all the other action cameras. It's, it's primarily about 
capturing in a similar fashion like a surveillance camera captures the action. And what you really do with it is all about your creativity because the, of course the photography with the capital P or of course also videography uh, only starts when you create a meaningful and interesting action that actually makes use of the technological capabilities of your camera. And with the 360 degree solutions, you're, you're not really sure yet. And at least to me, it, re it really feels like there's not something convincing yet. Uh, so we will all keep an eye on it. Um, it's an interesting development, but it feels like all the companies kind of cater to an unclear demand by the market. And everyone's trying to focus on VR and 360 degrees right now, but nobody really knows what to do with it. At least and that is my impression. So much about that. So these two trends are kind of interesting. Again, as I just said, the, the photo industry kind of catering to the demands of the market, sometimes in a clear fashion, by just copying other companies' successes, like in this case of instant film, and then catering to unclear demands or um, expectations from the audience. The third trend that I noticed and that to me feels much more like the photo industry is actually trying to push the boundaries of innovation and create something new and probably interesting for the future is the development of mirrorless medium format cameras. And first and foremost, Hasselblad introduced the or announced the X1D prior to Photokina. And at the Photokina Fair, you could actually get your hands on the camera. And a lot of people did exactly that. The internet is full of videos about the X1D and the first impressions. And apparently these are great. Uh, the camera features a medium sized sensor format, a 50 megapixel sensor, I guess. And not only Hasselblad introduced uh, something like that, but Fujifilm used Photokina to announce their very own mirrorless medium format digital camera with a 51.4 megapixel sensor. Uh, that also sounds very interesting and is of course directed at uh, prosumers or professional photographers. Uh, so a very interesting market niche that is uh, coming up there. Uh, for me personally, what I found most interesting about these cameras is the small flange distance uh, so that it will be uh, possible to adapt legacy lenses to these modern digital medium format cameras. So potentially you can add, you can adapt a uh, Carl Zeiss Hasselblad lens or Mamiya lenses, um, 6x4.5 or 6x6 lenses to these cameras as long as you don't care about manually focusing and you would potentially be able to um, profit from the, the, the optical quality of these legacy lenses and of course these are <laughs> much cheaper than a $2,000 or $3,000 Hasselblad lens that you would have to purchase with the X1D. So if these bodies turn out to be well made and if they kind of live up to the expectations, this is a very interesting development for medium format shooters. And that is much more affordable in some cases uh, than getting either a digital back or getting a complete modular medium format digital system like a phase one or a Hasselblad H6 or something like that. Uh, so. And for me, in many ways, this is a natural development, a natural progression from so-called full frame, so meaning the 35 millimeter sensor size equivalent to larger sensors, making them more affordable for a larger market, a wider audience, maybe having more companies joining in there and purchasing these kinds of sensors, so increasing the demand there, that might be interesting. And for me, when we look at the market, I, I think what will be really interesting to see is what companies like Sony, with all their experience and success that they had with the Sony Alpha 7 series, what they will be able to do when they take their learnings and all the knowledge that they've acquired and start to create a mirrorless medium format sensor size uh, camera. That at least to me would be very interesting to see uh, what's coming out of there. And I, I was kind of surprised, but in a really positive fashion, that Hasselblad was the one to, to push the envelope here and to be one of the first companies to do that. And 
yeah, I really like this development. I really like this development. I think it's the right thing to do. And um, I, I feel that this is one piece of innovation that's coming from Photokina 2016. So, so much about these three trends uh, that I noticed. And of course, there are many, many more that other people might have noticed, but that's what struck me the most, at least. Um, so, in addition to that, I have a few personal highlights that I just wanted to mention. Um, I, most importantly for me, I had a great conversation at the Cinestill film stand, which was a really tiny little booth right next to Photo Impacts, um, a, a company, a film distributor here in Germany based in Berlin, who are really nice. And next to them, you had Cinestill. And we had a conversation, a brief conversation about the 120, 120 medium format film that is coming up, a Cinestill film that is just in the making. They're just producing it um, in a small corner of the of a Kodak um, factory, actually, they told me. And they were really proud about the fact that all the Kodak people were <laughs> overwhelmed by the kind of speed that they <laughs> um, brought to the table and with uh, how quick they were able to create and manufacture this new film. Apparently, they are in the process of packaging it and the first production run will be sent out soon to the people uh, who backed the crowdfunding campaign. If you're interested in getting one of the first films, it's still possible to, to back the crowdfunding campaign, campaign and get one of the perks, so to speak. So if you want to do that, you can head over to scenestillfilm.com, they told me. If, if it's not so important to you, you can wait until around um, February 2017, they told me, then the film will be available to purchase on a regular basis. Um, on the website, and they also told me that it will be that they will produce it basically based on demand. Um, yeah, so that was one of my highlights. In addition to that, I really enjoyed the fact that you had Roli and Ilford and uh, Fomopan and companies like that there. Also, again, the Impossible Project booth was really, really, really nice. Um, I really enjoyed that. And my personal highlight, again, returning to Hasselblad, was the Hasselblad stand, because Hasselblad managed in a unique way to display their long tradition with medium format analog cameras displaying, and another cameras displaying the V system and the X-Pan camera. Um, but of course, also showing the current lineup of medium format cameras, introducing the new mirrorless camera, and most importantly, at least that struck me the most, was a uh, six by six medium format digital concept camera um, with a 35 megapixel sensor. <laughs> and I really liked the look of this camera. It was also, it's also based on this modular idea of the traditional Hasselblad cameras. Uh, so you might want to take a look at that. It's there are a lot of articles all over the internet about this particular camera and In my opinion at least this would be a very interesting <laughs> Camera not just as a concept, but actually to make it available on the market especially with the 6 by 6 ratio to to revive that uh, Because as you know a lot of film shooters out there really appreciate that square format and if we look at what the impossible project and now Fuji Instax Square are doing maybe and Instagram did in the first place where we also see some kind of resurgence of the square format. So um, I hope you enjoyed this lengthy opinion piece. Um, if you like this video anyways, please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. If you want to see more videos like that, please subscribe to my channel and also let me know in the comment section below. I uh, really appreciate every comment that's coming my way and try to answer it as quickly as possible. Um, I, yeah, I hope to see you soon and thank you very much for watching. Bye.